Hello, hello! Welcome guys back in Muse of Maverick Channel, this is Maverick here, and right now we're going to be starting Episode 5 of Beastars. So, my apologies that this one is still a little bit late, uh, I was on a trip, I just got back, uh, and I've been, you know, trying to catch up with my normal scheduling, right? Next week, from next week on, it should, you know, settle down, and we can probably get the uh, new videos out about a day after they've been released on Netflix, right? Because I still have to wait for the translating group. Um, but yeah, back to the episode at hand. You know, last episode, really great conclusion to this, the entire arc, I guess you could say. Um, Legacy has finally stepped out into the light uh, via invitation from Lewis. And of course, he had this big fight with Bill beforehand, right? Um, in regards to, uh, I guess, sort of like a parallel to their roles and how they feel about, you know, themselves as carnivores in this sort of... I would say a really perverted world in a sense. Um, I mean perverted as in the morals are perverted and whatnot, but that's part of the charm of the story, right? Um, now what I'm really interested in is in the aftermath of everything that's happened, right? Like is Bill going to be getting into trouble because he possessed some you know, rabbit blood, which I assume are akin to drugs here uh, within this world. And now that Legacy has stepped into light, is he going to be changing his behavior and whatnot? Um, maybe embracing his carnivore side more? And of course, he also uh, sort of you know, admitted last episode, I believe, that he has these sort of feelings for Haru. So is he going to act upon them? Like, what's going to happen with their relationship? And of course, Lewis, the infallible Lewis, you know, he's... We we definitely can see that he's still more on the side of light than the side of darkness, uh, if you could say it like that. But uh, he does definitely have his own darkness, right? And I do wonder what that actually is. So, let's just get into the episode and see what the next story is. Alright, so they started with the opening this time. I skipped it. Let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Oh. Okay, I think they just uh, said that he's a new actor. <laughs> of course, rumors get exaggerated. Huh. That's a weird title. And Legacy is hiding right now. He doesn't want the attention, I guess. Oh, why are you t No, Bill would have won. Mm-hmm. 
está para recibir la adoración de nuestro Padre Celestial. Aleluya. So now they have to put on an act. <laughs> Go with the flow. Nice spin, Lewis. Okay, does he really? I, I do believe he really thinks that, but... Hmm. That's what friends are for. <laughs> yeah, this is a good thing. Love. <laughs> and he's like, wait, I actually... <laughs> That's what friends are for. Oh, Lewis. Really?
<laughs> really? <laughs> Ah, oh. I can already imagine the drama. <laughs> oh, summer break. All right. Man, they're even. Having Nats Yasumi in this anime. And a festival as well? Alright. And of course, all the cliche festival things in anime. Will probably happen, right? Even though they're they're a bunch of animals. You know, fireworks, cicadas, lots of stalls. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. Okay, so the Astro Club knows what's happened, right? Well, of course, you never. This is Haru. Right around the court. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I think she has a small cut on her head. Shouldn't you be taking out your anger on your ex-boyfriend? <laughs> I 
<laughs> like I see us behind him. <laughs> no, higher. Come on, they can't. They can't actually eat you guys on campus. Uh, of course, this is... Okay, that was a good start. True. <laughs> 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 of course, the real is just gonna start flying. Ah, uh, this is funny. <laughs> I love how even though he has all these spots and whatnot, his actual expression doesn't change. Oh, okay, never mind. I mean, yeah, something like this, right? It, I mean, you guys, it's, oh, this is definitely, <laughs> In a practical sense. <laughs> what is this re reflex? Oh, because... Was it because you were... Hmm. 
Is that just your natural instinct? Or is it because... You were actually... And pray for him before. <laughs> oh, they still actually walk. I thought you wanted to distance. Oh no, actually she doesn't really want to distance herself from him. あ。そうか。そうか。Ah, look at him, he's excited. Oh, so that's the reason for that. Because if he stoops down, his tail is going to touch. Okay, I see. And is this yet again a new song? I think so. Is it? Sorry, I mean, I I literally only listened to each of these ones. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, we've actually seen this one before. Let's do. Yeah, with the tails and whatnot. Okay, okay. Well, I guess that's about it then. Uh, I'll see you guys after this. Alrighty, so love is in the air, right? Uh, and it's nice that we actually do get some actual development between Legoshi and Haru within this episode. Although, to be fair, it was kind of frustrating watching their conversation, right? It reminded me of lots of those different uh, rom-coms where the main character or the male lead is really being a bit of a whiner i guess you could say for lack of better words um but um you know i guess it's i mean we've all had experience with this kind of thing already i mean i'm talking about animes or other works that is so uh it is what it is although i feel like the dynamic here is a little bit different especially since you know legoshi is you know just the fact that they are animals right and they have this different kind of power balance really um changes the entire dynamic quite a bit compared to these usual rom-coms where we have a more shy or timid male main character male lead uh with the girl that he's interested in right so i did find that kind of dynamic to be interesting compared to the 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 others and it actually does make it even a little bit more frustrating as well um yeah, due to the fact that we know Legoshi is, um, you know, he has other problems besides the fact that he is a carnivore and he is a big gray wolf and he is on more of the top of the food chain, if you will. So uh, I just thought that was an interesting contrast there. Um, and speaking of Haru, right? Uh, so one thing I do want to mention is in regards to that scene with Lewis, right? Now I made the I made the point there that that's probably going to cause some drama later on down that point. The more that I think about it, though, you know, I don't think there's anything particularly um, going on 
uh, between them, you know, besides obviously they're having sex and whatnot. Uh, but I think by all means, Lewis is just another patron of Haru's, right? I mean, she's well known in the school for, for doing these kinds of things. So he could just be possibly, you know, getting it on with her, um, with, I mean, hey, people need to satisfy their, uh, um, their urges, their needs, right? So nothing wrong with that. So I feel like, I don't know, but, but the fact that they actually showed it and, you know, it, it revolves around two of the main characters, um, even though they're not be anything special between them, I still feel like it might be a point of drama later on down the road. Um, that uh, would be the logical uh, thing to think of, right? And, um, and yeah, uh, another thing I want to talk about with Haru is in regards to, you know, her entire personality and whatnot, right? And more specifically, I'm talking about the, the point where she's confronting the, you know, the people that's bullying her, right? Um, so I don't really want to say that she's been hurt before and that's causing her to, to you know, sort of be more loose, um, eh. I mean, I don't even want to say it's loose. She, like I said numerous times, I'm not exactly that kind of morally upright person, right? If she wants to sleep around, that's her prerogative. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying that normally people, and especially with with her words against the the bullies there, you know, the way that she sort of berated them for, uh, you know, for for their romance and their, you know, their thoughts and their perspective on things. I do feel like people turn cynical due to experience, right? The experience can be either be on herself or from others. So it's a possibility that maybe she was, you know, tricked and hurt by romance before. Um, and so that's why she's cynical about love and all that. You know, that is, uh, I feel like, one of the most cliche answers out there in regards to this type of situation. But we shall see, right? I'm just saying that, you know, judges, just judging from this kind of dialogue, I feel like we're getting a little bit of hint in, hints into um, her personality and why she's currently the way she is, right? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, on Haru's part that I want to mention. And also, in regards to Lewis, uh, one thing that I, that, you know, kind of, uh, drew my attention this episode is the scene at the beginning, where, um, Legosi said that that was the first time he saw Lewis waver, right, when they, when he was, uh, admonishing those two, and the... Uh, the newspaper club came to find them, right? So why specifically point out that Lewis wavered there? Um, was was there was there any particular concern that he had? Was he afraid that the facade that the drama club was putting up would was going to be broken? Like this this aura of them being the symbol of unification and harmony and whatnot. That was was he worried about that entire facade being broken? Um, I don't really know, right? Because I feel like it's not actually not that the end of the world if it turns out that Drama Club was having some some brawl between themselves, right? Um, and not to mention that I feel like he 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 turned the situation around rather quickly and and so on and so forth. I feel like it wasn't that hard to to cover up, uh, all things considered. So not really sure why they made a specific point to point out that he was wavering there, and that was the first time that Legoshi had seen him waver. Or is or um is it actually trying to point out that Legoshi is being more perceptive of things now, and he's he's gradually you know broadening his his own horizons. He's not just this sort of introverted, uh, always hiding in the shadows person. Uh, person now he's actually going around and actually seeing things and actually observing all these different things maybe that's the point that the anime was trying to make um and so yeah uh that was one point of interest that i had and also for the record i do agree with lewis's original punishment for bill and legoshi right you know regardless of of what happened at the end there you know they they broke rules they um you know they they to be, you know, it, rules are rules, right? You you need to do, you need to have a proper sort of punishment, even though maybe the outcome wasn't all that bad. So I do agree with uh, Lewis's decision with the punishment there, although it didn't end up being carried out at the end there. Um, so yeah. Uh, and what else, right? I guess Legoshi, not honestly, not really much I want to talk about uh, in regards to him for now. Um, 
you know, we're seeing him develop. We're seeing him develop. I, I do feel like um, at first I was kind of afraid that they were still going to make them into this really, really um, beta character that um, that couldn't say anything and it was going to be completely frustrating. And I feel like the frustration level was a bit lower than what I was dreading, right? So we can see that he's clearly, you know, still making the effort to, to take steps out. He's still taking the effort to, to seize the day and whatnot, to actually step out of the shadows. And that's a good thing, right? I don't really want to spend, you know, half the season watching him wallowing in self-pity and whatnot. So I did enjoy that part at least. And so we can only hope that he will continue to gain confidence and grow uh, better and better as a person as well. So what do you expect from the next episode? Well, it's festival time again. And, you know, I made this point where how, you know, even in this sort of setting, we have this cliche of, of going to the festivals, you know, it's summer break. Um, now they need to go to festivals and probably there's going to be a lot of different activities, festival like activities that we're going to be seeing. Although judging from the the um, the scene that we saw within this episode, perhaps they're not actually going to be wearing yukatas and whatnot. So maybe there's not that. Um, but definitely, you can imagine that there's probably going to be a lot of celebra celebratory stuff, um, lots of events, uh, lots of food to eat and whatnot. And of course, there's got to be some time that uh, Legoshi and Haru can you know, have some time to go on some semi-dates, right? Now, I don't know whether or not it's going to just going to revolve around this festival and then immediately restart school again where we're going to actually have some you know some break time and, and see what they do outside of school if you will uh, i feel like that would also be quite fun as well and i do want to kind of see the, the world uh, at large as well like how exactly is society functioning right now we, we see a sort of uh, image of it in regards to school but um is that really how the real world works um you know, is there a different dynamic between that? So that's something that I'm also really curious about as well, which we'll probably get to in the next episodes um, once they actually start their summer vacation. So there we go. That is V-Stars episode 5 review. Uh, like I said, next week we'll probably uh, be going more to the actual schedule, um, which would mean that uh, the video should come out about one day after uh, Stars is released on its Netflix platform. So hopefully, hopefully that is the case. Fingers crossed. And thanks for your guys' patience. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.